Elizabeth uh, Warren certainly using one of the highest paid celebrities you know to make this point, but again, to, as to whether it resonates with voters. To former Bain capital partner Ed Conard, um, what do you think, Ed? Uh, I think that the uh, uh, Elizabeth Warrens of the world have a strong argument to make. I don't agree with the argument, but on the surface, I think it appears to make sense, which is if you can just buy companies and cut costs and flip them, uh, it doesn't seem fair to the employees. I think it's pretty irresponsible management team if you can find investment opportunities like that. I think most investors, small businessmen, uh, uh, managers of companies know that it's very hard to make money as an investor. But, but you that's have to what Mitt, I mean, you were an advisor to Mitt Romney. That's what he went through in his presidential run, his bank capital days and all the turnaround stories. But people remember the layoffs as well. How do you counter that? Well, in the case, I mean, most cases when you do see layoffs, like in the retail industry, for example, or the steel industry, right. the paper industry, you see major strategic change going on in the economy, which is causing layoffs independent of private equity. There's no way private equity is trying to wade into those circumstances and make investments. Those turn out to be very this, poor. She knows investments. she's not a dummy. I mean, but she knows it's also the kind of thing that generates enormous publicity to the point where she can then say, look, I have billionaires mad at me. I have all these Wall Street financiers mad at me. And she campaigns a lot. Well, I, think, I think you are making a decision about whether or not you want laws that defend the status quo or you're going to suffer through, if you will, the creative destruction of the U.S. I think you see that Europe's been captivated by trying to defend the status quo. Their, their uh, uh, household consumption is 30 percent below the northern European household consumption which is 30 percent below what it is in the United States. It, if you look at uh, the amount of temporary jobs they have because they have a lot of, of, of mandatory employment, they have 14, 15 percent of their jobs are, are temporary jobs versus only 4 or 5 percent in the United States. Hmm. So if you try to defend the status quo, if you look at uh, pr productivity, for example, the U.S. is growing 50 percent faster than northern Europe since 2000. So when you try to defend the status quo against the pain of creative destruction, in the long run, it has a big effect on the prosperity of your middle class. But it seems very appealing to people in the short run. But the whole idea of a wealth then. tax seems very appealing to her and maybe some of the progressives in the Democratic Party, even though the Europeans themselves have tried that. And we had a, better than a dozen in the, in the 90s trying it, now down to two or three. So even among the Europeans, which she holds up as a model, it, it isn't their cup of tea anymore. I, I think whenever you say, I'll tax somebody else and give you benefits, there's a lot of people who are going to sign on for that. And the, and the more exclusive you make the taxation, 50 billionaires, or, you know, 100 billionaires, whatever, you get higher and higher on the number, more and more people will support that. I think it's very difficult to really, understand. Really, even in a, in a general election, like if she were the Democratic nominee, uh, I would think that the president would have a field day with that just saying, you know, just the opposite. But, but maybe not. Maybe the base is so impassioned by it uh, that that they turn out in record numbers I think the I think she will have a difficult time winning because her positions are extreme but I think the way to beat her easily is to keep showing comparisons between the United States and Europe and on almost any dimension that you want to look at a uh, number of billion dollar uh, startups that have been created in the US six times what they are in Europe stock markets up 50 percent since the president was elected versus 20 to 25 percent in Europe on any measure of comparison what you see in Europe is extremely slow growth a much less prosperous middle class and ultimately these these uh, 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 laws that she wants to pass, these taxation laws or, or preventing private equity from getting in there and trying to manage companies more effectively than they're being managed, have big impacts on the economy in the long run. Let me ask you this. You're very close to Mitt Romney, very close to the president. How do you, how do, you do that? <laughs> Keep my views to myself. Is the, yeah. But you like them both a great deal. And sure, I'm, I I'm just tried. wondering, I mean, they've had their differences. Um, you just, just leave that off the table. I think I have tremendous respect for anybody who's willing to dedicate their life to public service, particularly people like the president and Mitt Romney, who have walked away from uh, making enormous amounts of money in the private sector to, to try to make the United States more effectively, whether you agree with them or not. I think I have respect for both of their points of view right. and understand how, how they get there. Um, you know, I have my own points of view and I argue, but uh, it doesn't really matter. I haven't, I haven't changed Switzer many minds. You're playing the role of Switzerland here, aren't you? Uh, it's very good seeing you, Ed, Ed Conard. Uh, very tight and very close to some of the key players, diverse as they are, within the Republican Party, including Mitt Romney and the President of the United States. Meanwhile, for